good so basically um, the topic or what I want to discuss today is um, the candidacy of um, Dr. Muhammad um, Muhammadu Tangara um, Dr. Tangara is currently the the foreign minister, the minister of foreign affairs um, of the Gambia. And prior to that, he was the permanent representative of the Gambia to the United Nations in New York. And before that as well, I think he was um, he was he was foreign minister. Um, um in the gambia on the um the the past dispensation of um yaya jami i believe he was a lecturer at the university of the gambia as well but anyways what i'm gonna try to do is to to give a brief overview i want to i want to put a little bit of context into into this this message so it doesn't seem or it appear i want it to be very balanced as i usually do so i'll just give a little bit of a background to those for those that have been following me on social media um prior to 2020 2019 2020 2021 um and i've got i've got a lot of I, well not a lot but i got quite a few messages at least about 11 when i counted this evening i got about 11 messages from various individuals um you know i guess based on my engagement on my facebook wall what they were asking is am i really supporting um dr tangara and of course these are these are individuals some of whom are close to me some of whom have just you know been engaging with me on social media especially most notably on facebook so prior to dr tangara being appointed as minister of foreign affairs and i'm going i'm going back to 2016 to december 2016 or january at there about um of course we we all we all know or I, I mean especially if you're gambian what happened at the time because um you had the elections, you had the coalition government that came, you know, that was elected into office. But of course, you had that period where you had the political impasse. And of course, Jame said he was not um, leaving and that he was um, going to contest the election results. At the time, Dr. Tangara was the permanent rep. He was the um, Gambia's ambassador to the United Nations in New York at that time, at that moment. And... Um, of course, um, we had um, um, lawyer Usain Udabo, who then became the Minister of Foreign Affairs at the time, at this particular point, this period that I'm talking about. Now, I'm going to give a bit of a historical concept to just explain why when I speak on Dr. Tangaro or I speak on my opinion of, of him running um, or showing showing interest and running for the position of secretary generalship of the commonwealth that my position would be devoid of sentiments emotions or um, political patronage or even individual relationship now i worked at the foreign ministry and of course for those that are aware of what happened um with some you know nonsensical and rubbish allegations Dr. Tangara was then the foreign minister because lawyer Dabo at that point, and this was in 20, I'm talking about the period 20, 2018, around about August, July, August 2018 to, to, to let's say 20, no, say August 2018 to let's say um, to June 2019. At that time, um, Fatuma, Fat Fatumata Tambajang, who was then the minister, who was then the vice president, was fired by, by President Baro, or should I say at that time, I don't know if it was still the coalition government, I should say, was fired. And, and lawyer Dabo was appointed as vice president at this time, at this period. Now, 
when Dr. Tangara came to, to the Gambia, he arrived somewhat around August, August or end of July, end of July, August of 2018. And one morning I went to work and I was informed by the then permanent secretary who is now the ambassador of the Gambia in Paris, in France, to France, um, Ibrahim Kamara, that, um, that Dr. Tangara had asked, who was then the minister, who had just assumed um, duties, had asked that I should hand over my official vehicle back to to the ministry and when i asked the then permanent secretary ibrahim um, Kamara, he said to me that as far as he was concerned someone in the ministry had informed dr tangara that i had two official cars that were assigned to me which of course was not true because what happened was that my official car that was assigned to me had a breakdown. And in the interim, the then director of um, the director general of protocol at the time allowed me to use this other vehicle whilst I decided to take the, the, my official vehicle that was assigned to me to the mechanic garage to get it fixed. But Dr. Tangara had just returned. And of course, from what the then permanent secretary said to me was that Dr. Tangara had asked that they should request that I returned the vehicle. So when he said that to me, I said, I said to him, I said, but why would Dr. Tangara not, not approach me or ask or try to verify if that's the case? I said, the other vehicle is with the mechanic at the moment but notwithstanding i owned i had my personal v i had my own personal vehicle at the time so i was like you know what i, I own my vehicle before i was even working in the foreign ministry so i have a car to use so i said that's not a problem so i of course i returned i returned the vehicle so that was the first encounter i had as me dr tangara being my boss at the foreign ministry never spoke never went to him to get you know to ask or anything but that this is what i was told and of course i returned the vehicle and i left it to that now during this period in 2018 we had the un general assembly that was that was supposed to take place in new york in august september september there about in september in new york so I was the designated official at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that was responsible basically in liaising with the, with the American Embassy and liaising with the State House Office of the President to coordinate the representation of, of, of um, um, government officials attending the UNGA meeting because I was, I was the desk officer also under my purview, um, I was responsible for um, the the American division because in the foreign ministry, the the directors, permanent secretaries were um, had divisions that were under them. So you had the Asia division, you had Africa, you had um, I think Eastern. I, I can't remember the various. Um, designations but definitely i was responsible for the american division and of course for gambian diaspora and gambians abroad so these was on these were under um, um my um they were part of my portfolio per se so i was really basically coordinating with my team you know the arrangements and logistics i was working with the protocol department was working with the um the American embassy with the then ambassador and deputy ambassador at the time, and then liaising with um, with state house to 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 actually galvanize and you know work on on on, on you know various thematic areas that were um, the Gambia would take part in, 
and we're also working on the representation the government officials that were going to attend this meeting i was also responsible of you know to help secure their visas and stuff like that even though it was the protocol department that would do that but i was basically the coordinator of it as the as the head of the american division now i did this and this was like these were i mean if you understand or get, have an idea on how the, the how government works how the foreign ministry works um so these were ongoing engagements that took a few months preparing for this and we had we had the list the, de the the delegation list that came from the office of the president of course we had the list of officials within in the foreign ministry that that would attend um the meeting in new york and basically, at the time, it was standard practice that the official that was responsible for arranging and for, you know, coordinating the activities of, of the UNG, of Gambia's participation at the UNG, of course, liaising with the, the permanent mission in New York, the embassy in Washington, and everything that it would it would it would it would be common sense you would assume it's common sense for that designated official to be part of the government delegation to the to the un so that was done of course um at the time um the head at the head or uh, the permanent secretary had um we had you know we sat down as a team we had the names of all the officials that would take part usually it's divided into two you had you had the advance team that would go, um, and then you had the second leg, um, another team that would actually accompany or go with the president, um, because the president was going to attend the UNGA um, for, um, at this particular period. Now, within this time frame, we had secured um, um, the visas and everything like that. And within that period, I'm, I'm just trying to give a historical context before I get into the proper the substance of my of this live video. So within that period, um, and all this while, Doc, um, um, His Excellency Hussein Dabo, lawyer Dabo, was the vice president, was the Minister of Foreign Affairs. But within this period, Fatumata Tambajang, who was then the vice president, was fired by by President Adam Abaro, and lawyer Dabo was now appointed as vice president then dr tangara who was then in new york as the gambia's rep representative to the united Nations, was recalled to banjul and appointed as foreign minister now when he got to banjul again um i sat down of course like i said i was spearheading all the all the activities of the UNGA, working on speeches for the president, collating papers, talking to other officials that would take part, because the way the UNGA works and the way that representat representation or government representation is done is that you follow the thematic areas that are being discussed, the UN team to see what relevant ministry um, would take part, what officials would take part, based on the theme of the of the UNGA. So. As I was doing all this, lazing, walking between Office of the President, State House, and the Foreign Ministry, and that um, the same, um, I was called into, my boss called me into the office and said to me, in fact, in fact, when Dr. Tangara came, we met and we, you know, we had, we had a few sessions in his office as the, as the, as the, as the, the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, he had just returned he had just come back and was appointed. So we had a few, I, I remember having a series of meetings with him um, where I was coordinating these activities. But all of a sudden, I got, a, I got a message from my boss who called me into his office to say that um, Dr. Tangara had asked that my name be struck off the list of Gambia's um, delegation to the UN. So I, I'm bringing a bit of a context here. I'm not sure you would get, you would, you're following me, but I've raised two issues. One was when I was informed that Dr. Tangara had said that my official vehicle should be taken away from me and that I should surrender it back to the ministry. And of course, like I said, no explanation. I never spoke to Dr. Tangara about it up to this day. And the second issue now was when I was told that Dr. Tangara had asked that 
I should be struck off the delegation list. Albeit that I have been the official at the ministry who was doing a donkey job, who was working on getting this thing done. Now, at that time, I sent Dr. Tangara a text message where I raised this issue. And to this date, I never got a response back on that issue that I raised. Luckily for me, at the time, I, within this period of writing to Dr. Tangara and sending that message, and of course, I was very upset as a human being, rightly so. I was very disappointed because this was something that I had coordinated. I had worked hard for. I did not see or believe there was any other official that was more deserving of attending the UNGA than myself. But I was told that was the, the, the minister's um, um, instructions that I should be struck off the list. I sent him a text message to, you know, to, to register my dissatisfaction on that. And I never got a response back ever since then to date. Um, did I meet Dr. Tangara after that? Yes, I met Dr. Tam Tangara severally after that. We've exchanged pleasantries. Have I ever raised this issue? No, I've never raised this issue. Um, but I'm just giving a bit of a, of a context. So this, that, that was two instances that, have, that I have given that would make me, ordinarily as a human being, not to even want to hear the name Dr. Tangara, let alone even give any sort of credence or, or, or patronage or support to, to him running as a candidate or for the office of the Secretary General of the Commonwealth. Ironically, during that same period, um, I was awarded a full scholarship by the Commonwealth um, to, to study at the University of Oxford to do um, so, of course, um, as God could have it, I left the Gambia even before the UNGA. So I never attended the UNGA and I left, took, um, asked for leave of absence, um, a study leave without salary and I left the Gambia. It was approved and I left and um, moved to the UK to study in Oxford. So those were two instances. Now the third scenario, which was, uh, you know, several other instances of different things um, that happened was whilst I was studying in Oxford, of course, there were some baseless, illogical allegations that came out. But Dr. Tangara was still the Minister of Foreign Affairs. When the Ministry of Foreign Affairs wrote i had several communication from the ministry of foreign affairs writing to me some of the letters albeit were very personal and threatening but not only that these letters were also leaked to the press because of course at the time common sense would dictate that i would not leak those letters those personal um communications from the foreign ministry who was then basically my employer from the government of the gambia to the press so that was not coming from me, but these letters were leaked to the press. It was all over social media. And then, of course, um, there, was, there were newspaper articles where it stated that um, my diplomatic immunity has been revoked, that my diplomatic passport has been cancelled, that I have been suspended by the foreign ministry. And all these things happened whilst Dr. Tangara was Minister of Foreign Affairs. Now... From now till thy kingdom come, I mean, common sense and logic would dictate that even where Dr. Tangara were to look at me and tell me to my face that he was not aware of these correspondences and these things, it was, it was making newspaper headlines where when it, when it was stated by the foreign ministry that my diplomatic immunity was revoked, it, was, it made the front newspaper headlines in the standard, on the standard newspaper. When it said my diplomatic passport was cancelled, it made headlines. So there was no way any Gambian official can tell me that they were not aware. But all of these things happened under the stewardship, I should say, and, and direction of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, who was Dr. Tanger. So, so basically... Um, and of course, we all know that that was all fallacy because it never happened because I never claimed diplomatic immunity in England. I didn't come to England 
as a diplomatic representative. I came to England as an international student, as a, stu as a student to study. It had nothing to do with the government of the Gambia. I was not I was not sponsored by the government of the Gambia. I was not sent by the government of Gambia to come to, to England. In fact, my, my applications and everything to Oxford University were done personally, individually by myself, and it had nothing to do with um, government of the Gambia or my work or my job. It was a straightforward, ordinary um, thing. So, so fast forward, um, I think if there's anybody, there's anybody who has absolutely no reason whatsoever. No reason whatsoever to support the candidacy of Dr. Tanga. It is me. If there's one person that should be vindictive enough, it is me. If I'm a small-minded person, I should be sitting here and saying no that Dr. Tangara is a bad person, that Dr. Tangara did this to me. I've, I've sat down with older people. I've had conversations with people that had worked in the civil service, and they would tell you how bitter they are. So I, I know a particular scenario of a particular you know, lady that I was close to, an, old, an elderly person. She's now passed away. And there was a particular woman that she was not speaking to. And, you know, when I asked her, why aren't you talking to this woman? She said, I will never speak to this woman until I go to my grave. And I was like, what happened? And she said to me, whilst I was working in the civil service, this woman was my boss. And this woman did this to me, did that, you know, did not, did not allow for promotion for me or did not do this. So I know how people can hold to such resentment, to such bitterness, to such grudge. And if I were to sit and speak so and the reason why i'm giving context to to this conversation is because i want people to know that whatever it is that i'm going to say on the candidature of dr tangara is got nothing to do with my relationship with ship with him i have absolutely no existent relationship with dr mamadu tangara not it does not exist I've never called Dr. Tangara and asked him for any favors for as long as I have lived and I've known myself. Even where I felt the foreign ministry was writing things that was against me, did not even allow me to rely on the presumption of innocence. As my employ em employer, I expected that I would be protected until that period where I would have been convicted if the allegations were, were true and can be substantiated. But that did not happen. They did not give me that benefit. But for those that know me, I'm a person, I speak my mind, but I don't hold grudges. And I have never approached Dr. Tanger. I've never spoken to Dr. Tanger about these issues. Um, I've spoken to him on other issues that had bearings on activities of the foreign ministry, especially when it had to do with issues of um, um, the, 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 the women that were stranded in, in Libya, and is it Lebanon? I, I can't remember. The country so that at that time i i worked uh, you know i discussed with the with the min the honorable uh, minister and that was it i've never asked him for a favor never reached out to him for anything i don't speak to him personally so i have absolutely no reason under the sun whatsoever to speak on behalf of dr tangara on uh on 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 uh a way that is patronizing. No, it does not exist. And that was why I was given context and I was explaining the engagements I had with him so that would be quite, quite understood. And the reason why I want to do that is because I have noticed in Gambian circles, when you speak in favor of something, it is because people feel that you're aligned to that person or that person is your friend. And when you speak against that person, it is deemed that it's because of bitterness, it's because of hatred, it's because of, you know, such negative things. So I'm saying, and that's why I was building a context that ordinarily, with all the scenarios that I had given, the last, maybe, maybe, and I've said this to my man, I've said maybe it wasn't true what was said to me, that was said that it was Dr. Tangara that said that, maybe it wasn't true. And maybe when I sent him the message, that was why he didn't respond. But also, in looking at it from the flip side, I would always feel that not responding to me was actually dignifying the 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 you know what 
what I was told that he was the one that asked that my name be struck off the delegation list. Now, fast forward to the topic of discussion, and that is Dr. Tangara's candidacy for the position of Secretary General of the Commonwealth. Now, I am on social media, very active on social media, so it will be hypocritical of me to say that I have not seen the petition that is going and making the rounds against the candidacy of Dr. Tangara. Now, I read, I read the petition carefully, and one major grounds on the reason why that petition was advanced is because Dr. Tangara walked for and was foreign minister under Yaya Jame. When I read this, I found this statement to be quite hypocritical. Not only do I find it hypocritical, I find this statement to be very biased. I find this statement to, to, to be devoid of logic and good and sound reasoning. I found the statement to be very vindictive. I find the statement to be very insulting to the average Gambians. I find the statement to be playing with the intelligence of the average Gambian. And I also lastly found the statement to be untruthful. Very untruthful. Now, I made a, a comment that if Dr. Tangara, if there is no Dr. Tangara, there shouldn't be a civil service structure in the Gambia. I had a few unpleasant comments of people just assuming and trying to give interpretation to what I said. Now, I'm going to qualify why I said what I said. Now, every single person that worked in and within the Gambian sea civil service structure be it from the cleaner to the permanent secretary to the secretary general between the period of 1994 and 2016 had in one way or an order either by commission or by omission either by deliberate act intentional acts or by by acts of error have aided and abetted the regime of your Ajami. I will repeat what I just said. From 1994, from July 23rd, 1994, or should I say July 22nd, 1994, substantively, to 2016, every single person that has worked within the civil service structure of the Gambia from the cleaner to the secretary general and head of the civil service have in one way or another aided and abetted the regime, the dictatorship, the governance of Yaya Jam. Either by direct intervention, either by commission, either, sorry, I just, okay, I just read a comment from Momodu. He said, you should tell us why you think he's a better candidate. You see, I'm speaking and I will get to that point, but you cannot determine what I say and when I should say it. It's very easy if you feel that what I'm talking is nonsense. All you have to do is check out of the live. You just have to protect your mental health um, and just get out. I think, I'm sure your mental health is quite important to you. So you don't dictate to me how I speak or what I say on my Facebook Live. I've not invited you to watch. It's not by and force to listen to me. So you can choose to listen or you can choose to check out. Protect your mental health. Take a chill pill. Drink a glass of Coke and go lay down. But anyways, um, I'll ignore the comments and I'll get back to what I was saying. That every single person that worked within the civil service 
either by omission, commission, either by direct intervention, either 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 deliberately or the, on, in, in, unintentionally have ad aided and abetted the, 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 the Jamia regime. Now, to say that a person cannot vie for a position simply because he served under the regime of Yaya Jame is dishonorable in itself. And this takes me back to the time when civil society decided to come up with a petition against Mama Fatima Singate when she was running for office. And of course, at that time, I wasn't as busy as I was. So I launched a ferocious counter campaign supporting the candidacy of Mama Fatima Singate as one of the progressive Gambian women that we have, regardless of the fact that she served on the Jami. And of course, what happened, a petition surpassed in thousands the petition that was against her candidature. Now, what I don't quite understand and what I cannot make any sense of is why would a person, why would any entity, why would a group of individuals come up together and say that because Dr. Tangara had served on the Jami, then he cannot run for office of Commonwealth Secretary Generalship. Now, every single person that is working or that worked for Jame in the civil service, in one way or another, helped the Jame regime. Now, as a lawyer, I understand that some individuals have greater responsibility than others. But having a greater responsibility than another person does not take away the, 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 the substantive fact that there is responsibility. Just because a person has the greatest responsibility and a person has least responsibility does not mean that they do not have responsibility at all. Now, what people don't also understand is that a few weeks ago or a few days ago, I think it was just yesterday or day before yesterday, Nene McDowell Gay was elected as chairperson of the Rights to Information Commission, if that's what it's called. This was a person who served not only as foreign minister, not only as foreign minister, he served as an ambassador, he served as a minister, but he, but she, Nene Magdal Gay, was just sworn in and elected as chairman and appointed as chairman of this commission. Now, to me, it devoids logic. Why would there not be a petition against Nene Magdol Gay, who also served as foreign minister under Yaya Jame, but would you would see the same group of individuals celebrating the fact that there is a, 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 an established commission that would allow Gambians to have access to information. But the same personality, the same entity that is chair of this commission is a person who walked in Jame's cabinet, took instructions from Jame, and was also a foreign minister under Jame's regime. What would be the significant difference between Nene Magdol Gay and... Dr. Momadou Tangara. The problem that I have in Gambia is the pick and choosing of who to support and who to remain silent about. That is dishonesty in itself. We are all celebrating Nene Magdal Gay being appointed. We all celebrated when Dr. Sira Job was appointed, but Dr. Sira Job served as foreign minister on the Jame, even if it is a day. Now, let me go back. Let me leave this and go back. Dr. Tangara, and I saw a lot of people, especially people in my UDP family, and this is, this is where I sometimes find things very problematic with regards to my political leanings. 
because sometimes it is seen to my mind that because you are an opposition and because you're on the other side you should therefore condemn every action of the government irrespective of what it is now when dr tangara was appointed as minister of foreign affairs there was no division between udp and president Barrow. i will repeat again what i have just said when dr tangara was appointed as minister of foreign affairs in 2018 there was not a visible fallout between the united democratic party and president barrow it was at a time when every single individual believed that that coalition government was just semantics and that it was actually a udp government so in all honesty and in all sincerity when dr when dr muhammad tangara was elected as minister of foreign affairs it was at a time when lawyer dabo was part of government it was at a time when lawyer dabo was was very okay and very cool with jame so in all honesty when dr tangara was being elected as foreign minister at the time lawyer dabo did not oppose and lawyer dabo did not feel that dr tangara was not a good fit to serve as foreign minister because he has served under yaya jami now when you had the coalition government when the coalition government came into being when there was no discord when there was no disunity it was at that time that dr tangara was seen as the most fitting person to be elected as foreign minister of the gambia and he was recalled from new york to come to banjul there was not a single dissenting voice there was not a single petition against dr tangara becoming um president um, um minister of foreign affairs by any entity by any civil so civil society organization and these civil society organizations were thriving in 2018. It was at a time that they were celebrating the democratic dispensation of President Barrow. And not one single person saw the need to come up with a petition, to come up with a protest, to stand at the junction, to apply to the Inspector General of Police for a permit to protest the appointment of Dr. Tangara as Minister of Foreign Affairs. So if you cannot protest at that time, if you did not see what was wrong with Dr. Tangara's appointment at that time, when everything was beautiful between you and Barrow, it is dishonesty. It is dishonesty of the tallest order to now see that Dr. Tangara is not fit to be Secretary General of the Commonwealth because you are no longer aligning with President Barrow politically. It means you need to check yourself it means you need to look at yourself what is it that you stand for what are your value system what are your principles and what do you believe in because the same man that you're calling unfit is the same man that you believe was in your cabinet was serving at your pleasure and it was the same man that you believe was very competent and the right person for that job before udp had a discord with President Barrow, all UDP ambassadors were answerable to Dr. Tangara as the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And he was still a minister that served on the Jamin. And there was not a single dissenting voice. Not a single dissenting voice. Not a single petition. Even today as we speak, there is not a single petition against Dr. Tangara serving as Minister of Foreign Affairs. So if you can recognize and accept and approve Dr. Tangara to serve as Minister of Foreign Affairs, it is disingenuous to say that he cannot serve at an international level. 
Because Dr. Tangara is representing the Gambia. He is branding the Gambia in the international community. As we speak, he has been representing the Gambia. He has been the face and voice of the Gambia in the international community from 2018 to 2024. And he was never seen as a misfit. He was never seen as a person without character. He was never seen as a person who was devoid of anything that could make him unfit for that role. Therefore, it is now wickedness, sheer wickedness, sheer hypocrisy of the tallest order to now want to go against the candidacy of this man just because it is an international appointment that would bring international recognition. If you did not see anything wrong with him then, you do not see anything wrong with him now, it is absolutely hypocritical, it is evil to see anything wrong with him while he's vying for an international position. What I would have expected to see in that petition was to tell me that Dr. Tangara does not have the credentials, that Dr. Tangara does not have the wherewithal to serve as Commonwealth Secretary General. What I wanted to see in that petition was a list of names that were more fitting, that they feel were more qualified, that they felt had more experience than Dr. Tangara, not to come with some lame duck excuse that Dr. Tangara cannot serve because he served on the Jame as foreign minister. Dr. Sida Job is still a prominent member of the United Democratic Party and he served as Jame's foreign minister. He served as Jame's ambassador. In fact, when the coalition government came into existence, forget, don't talk to me, don't mention the bit about he resigned. That is irrelevant. It is irrelevant because the fact that Dr. Sina Job served on the Jame, even if it was one day, he knew that Jame was being branded as a dictator. Yet still, he served on the Jame, even if it's one week. And you and I both know that Dr. Sida Job never served for one week. He served on the Jame. But he is still a prominent member of the United Democratic Party. And nobody has called his character into question. Because the truth is, not everybody that served on the Jame was devoid of character. The decrees. Ami Ben Suda the mother of Talib Ben Suda, a prominent Gambian, a senior member of the United Democratic Party. In fact, to some extent, it is being branded that she is one of the chief sponsors of the United Democratic Party. She was part of the people who drafted the decree that Yahya Jame ruled under. She was part, she, was, she served as attorney general and minister of justice, if I'm right, for Jame. Does that take away her character? Does that make it that she cannot serve? Abi Ben Suda served in the Jane Commission and she was seen as a good fit. Albeit now people are making accusations and allegations, but it is at a time when things are not going rosy. She's still foremost, one of the foremost and most respected Gambian legal luminary in that country. Did she not serve under Jame? Did she not serve under the pleasure of Jame? I see a lot of people the, the, celebrating SFR, celebrating SFR as chief counsel, lead counsel of the TRRC. Did SFR not serve under Jame? Do some of us know and understand how SFR got into the international scene? Was she not a senior state counsel at the Ministry of Justice? Can we not say SFL also aided and abetted Jame even if it was for a day? But it was the same man that led the TRRC investigation. He was the lead prosecutor for the TRRC that was celebrated all over Gambia. By the same activists themselves who are now going against the candidacy of Dr. Tangara. You know why? 
because the character of Esaphar cannot be determined by the fact that he served under Jammeh's regime. Esaphar can never be a Jammeh. And Jame can never be an SFR. So this issue about not supporting a candidate because they served on the Jame is ridiculous and redundant. And as far as I'm concerned, there has been no argument advanced, no argument advanced whatsoever that Dr. Tangara is not qualified for the position. If that was advanced, we would look into it. We would, we would accept, this, accept it as constructive criticism. But no, you're going against the man, albeit because he served on the jam. But I'll tell you also what most people did not know. What most people do not know, and which I know whilst I was doing my research in Oxford, is that Dr. Tangara single-handedly spearheaded the United Nations resolution on Gambia. And I'm saying this today and I'm on record. I'll repeat what I just said. For the coalition government to come into being, for President Adam Barrow to be sworn in and assume the leadership of the Gambia, it was because of the tireless intervention of Dr. Mamadou Tangara behind the scenes behind the scenes lobbying his 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 colleague um 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 um, um rep, reps at the united nations in new york having sleepless nights and doing everything it takes to ensure that the issue of gambia was tabled at the unga he dr tangara did that so some of the freedom that you are enjoying in gambia today regardless of the fact that he served jami he was very instrumental in ensuring that a resolution on the issue of Gambia was passed, which brought about the ECOWAS agreement. The UN ECOWAS agreement, which you can find on social media, you can find on the UN website, that allowed for President Barot, for President Jame to leave peaceably and go to Equatorial Guinea. Dr. Tangara was the then permanent representative of the Gambia to the United Nations, and he actively actively lobbied his colleagues tires, tirelessly to ensure that we enjoy the dispensation that we have today. So regardless of the fact that he served on the jam, just like Nene Magdol Gay, just like Dr. Do, um, Dr. Sida Joe, there came a time when Dr. Tangara, like all these other people, knew that it was time to throw in the tower. And stand by the people of the Gambia. And again, that is why I said, many of us in that country aided and abetted Jame, either by omission or by commission, because some of us were dead graveyard silent when Jame was around. We didn't make the noise that we are making today. We did not write the petitions that we are writing today. We did not stand in street corners and carry banners like we're doing today in Gambia. Some of us chose to run away. Some of us chose to run in on the tables and chairs. Some of us chose to be non-existent. So by our omission, we also aided and abetted Jame. Maybe some had the greatest responsibility. But all of us at some point aided and abetted Jame, even if it's for a day. So yes, there are people that served under Jame and when they fell out with Jame, yes, they resigned. They left. But it does not negate or take the fact that at some point, they answered yes, sir, to Jame. At some point, they took instructions from Jame. Even if it's for an hour, they did. So you cannot disqualify a man. You cannot change the character of a man. You cannot take away the, the qualifications, the experience of a man simply because he served on the jam. You cannot. And therefore the petition, to my mind, is devoid of logic. To my mind, the petition is hypocritical 
To my mind, the petition holds no water. To my mind, the petition is vindictive because it does not speak on the qualifications of Dr. Tangara assuming this office. So it, 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 it just basically means that they are now confirming that Dr. Tangara is very qualified to hold such a position. The Gambia, the average Gambian should stop being sore. The average Gambian should stop being wicked, being vindictive, being evil. You can disregard things. You can speak against things, but you must be honest and your principles must not sway from day to day. Your values cannot move from day to day, shifting like the English weather. It cannot. If Dr. Tangara is not fit to be UN um, um, Commonwealth Secretary General, then Nene Magdolge is not fit to be the chairperson of the Access to Information Commission. Then all other people that have served on the Jami are not fit to hold any particular position in that country. Then, and this goes back to my phrase, that if there is no Dr. Tangara, then there is no one within the civil service structure that served between 1994 and 2017 that can stand in that country, dissolve the entire civil service. Because one way or another, they all abetted and, and aided Jami. Did Yaya Jame ever go and, and, and kill somebody? Is there anything that shows that Jame actually killed a person himself? No. All the acts of Jame were done through Gambians. In fact, there is no tangible evidence that has been put forward to show that yes, it was Jame that did this or that or that or that. There is none. It's always and still is hearsay. He said, she said, power from above, or instruction from above. But there is not one single person that can say, I saw Jame do this. It was Jame that did this. So, so the whole government machinery aided dictatorship in that country. Civil society aided dictatorship in that country. I dare say even the Bar Association at some point aided dictatorship in that country if what we want to do is to say that anyone that associates with Jame is bad and devoid of character. I, as a person, as a Gambian, I consider it the greatest of privilege. I consider it the greatest of honor to have a Gambian vie for the position of Secretary Generalship of the Commonwealth. Now you tell me that a person is not fit to serve as Secretary General of the Commonwealth because of that person's association with a regime that is branded as a dictatorship. But the very establishment of the commonwealth, the very common denominator that brings about the commonwealth is based on what? Imperialism, colonialism, slavery, and all that goes with it. That is the common denominator of the commonwealth. That these were people that were suppressed by the United Kingdom. That these were people that one day at some point were under the British government. Were serving at the pleasure of the British government. That is what brings the commonwealth together. So you cannot write to the commonwealth to talk about dictatorship. To talk about a person that has been associated with dictatorship. That cannot serve as secretary general, but the very establishment of the commonwealth, whatever brings the objective, the common denominator that brings commonwealth nations together, what they share is a common master that subjected them and made them subjects. So attack the very foundations of the commonwealth. Don't write to the commonwealth. Because the commonwealth is not devoid of dictatorial tendencies. 
or does not have a dictatorial past. The very establishment of the commonwealth is rooted on imperialism, on slavery. That is what it is. It's very ironical that you're going against a person that's running as Secretary General of the Commonwealth. But you're not asking yourself, what, how did the Commonwealth come about? These are people that were subjected to the direction of a superior power that after they have fought in various ways to be independent under the disguise of neocolonialism, they have brought them all together to share a common wealth. What is common about the wealth that they share? What is common about the wealth that the United Kingdom shares with members of the Commonwealth? How common is that wealth? The truth is, the truth is, regardless of whatever association Dr. Tangara may have had with Jame, the fact is, irrefutable fact is that when some of you sat in your lazy corners and before you came out on social media and before you came out to stand in street corners and before you came out to say that you're fighting you're fighting um, dictatorship before you came out to say you're exercising your democratic right dr tangara played a very pivotal role in ensuring that jame left the gambia in ensuring that the, that the coalition government came into existence. I can also tell you authoritatively because I have seen files, I have seen correspondences, that Dr. Tangara was one bridge, one voice, one person, one individual that was bridging the gap between the Gambia and the United Nations, between the Gambia and ECOWAS, between the Gambia and the African Union, between the Gambia and its counterparts in the international community. Dr. Tangara did that for Gambia. So yes, he may have served under Jame, but history cannot be hidden. And the fact remains that he was very also instrumental in ensuring that Gambia today enjoys a democratic dispensation where petitions can fly left, right, and center. Petitions that we never saw, never saw during the 22 years of Jame. Never saw. And the mere fact, the mere fact, lastly, the mere fact that Dr. Tangara's candidacy is being supported by one of the most outstanding, one of the most phenomenal, one of the most celebrated, one of the most achieved Gambians, by the person of Dr. Fatou Bombensuda, who's the current High Commissioner of the Gambia um, 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 to the United Kingdom, throwing her weight behind Dr. Tangara, and not only that, but spearheading and leading the campaign. That speaks volumes. Because this is also an other celebrated daughter of the soil. Did she not also serve as AG on the Jame? She did. Does that change her character? Does that change her character? Does that change the person of uh, uh, her person? No. She went to she went, went on to serve at the highest office, raising the Gambian flag higher than we could ever imagine. Than we could ever, ever imagine. One of the most respected Gambian in the international community is Dr. Is Fatu, Dr. Fatu Bombensura. One of the most respected Gambian. Did she not serve in Jamais government? Of course she did. Did we not have, do we not have serving high court judges, supreme court judges? Do we not have, have, have magistrates that served under Jamais regime? Do we attack their character? Do we say that they are not fit to hold office because they serve on the Jame? Or because they have the greatest of responsibilities, they bear the greatest of responsibilities under the Jame regime? We don't do that. In fact, we are quick to say that we should approach the courts. 
We are quick to say that we should go to the courts and uh, to, 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 to take our, our grievances to the court. These are individuals that serve on the jammy, but it did not take away their character. It did not take away their credibility. It did not take away their substance. Serving on the jammy cannot equate to a person being devoid of character. So I wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly implore that we must support as Gambians, we must be unified in our support of the candidacy of Dr. Tangara. In one way or another, however you do it, as a true and honest Gambia, a true and honest Gambian, let us be happy for another Gambian for once. Let us throw our weight behind another Gambian. Some of, us, some of us are doing the worst of things in, close, in closed doors. Some of us that come out and speak on issues, on governance, on, 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 on public matters. We, we, we take a particular position. A position that, 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 that basically try to, to paint a picture that we are, we are righteous. That, that, that we've done no harm. We are the worst individuals in clo uh, behind closed doors. And if some of our deeds, some of our attributes, some of the things that we do behind closed doors were to be made open, we would be the least form of human beings that ever exist. So spare us, man. And if you're a Gambian who's honest, a Gambian who's sincere, a Gambian that has seen Nene Magdolge just being elected as the chairperson of the Right to Access Commission, and you celebrated that. I am imploring you to celebrate and support the candidacy of Dr. Tanga. That is what a human being of conscience does. That's what a person of character does. Not everyone who served on the Jame is a bad person. Not everyone who served on the Jame is devoid of character. And lastly, finally, finally, let me tell you, the role of a foreign minister as the foremost diplomat of a country is to sell the agenda of the government, is to brand that government positively. You can never expect to see a foreign minister that would go anywhere and say, yes, my government is a dictatorship. My government is a failure. That is stupidity to expect that. It's devoid of common sense and logic. The foremost responsibility of a foreign minister is to positively brand the image of his country. Is to positively advance the image of his country. Is to network, to negotiate, and bring back tangible returns that would be of benefit to his country and to his, con to his countrymen and to his government and to his state. That is the foremost responsibility of a minister. And you cannot expect Dr. Tangara to go into international meetings and conventions and say that Gambia is bad. That this is not working. That no, you don't expect that. It's not done anywhere in the world. Some of us are working for international organizations in countries that have done the greatest harm to humanity. To greatest harm to humanity. What happened with Tony Blair in England as a leader? What happened with the Iraq war? What happened with George Bush? Were these not American and UK government that we still serve under? Some of us, are we not working with international organizations in the UK that have direct funding from the UK government? Do we say we will not associate with them because they went into Iraq and over 100,000 innocent lives of women and children? That people were slaughtered? That there were no mass destruction in Iraq? That Saddam Hussein had no mass destruction? That the UK government and the American government went against the advice of UN inspectors that, that presented a position paper to the United Nations Security Council, the United Nations General Assembly, to say there were no mass weapons of destruction in Iraq? And yet still these government, the American government and the UK government went into Iraq, slaughtered innocent Iraqi children and women? And we still associate with those governments. We still go around the world and, 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 and supporting the democracy in those countries. Yet still we condemn, absolutely condemn 
um, um, the association of, 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 of Dr. Tangara. It is hypocritical, very hypocritical, because the same government, in fact, some of the, the funding that civil society organizations are enjoying, some of the funding that, 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 that these non-governmental organizations are enjoying are coming from governments that have engaged in the most repressive forms of governance. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Dr. Omar Touri of ECOWAS served under Jammer's government. Was there a petition against his election? Was there a petition against his election? The fact is, I don't have a problem with people condemning everyone. But don't pick and choose who you condemn based on association, based on hatred, based on what you feel about that person. I will reiterate that Dr. Tangara at all costs should be supported by Gambians. At all costs should be supported by Gambians. And let me just clarify, I've seen this comment a few times before I end. It says it is contradictory for someone who facilitated a withdrawal. You see, when people don't understand issues of governance and how government machinery works, because Dr. Tangara is the Minister of Foreign Affairs, when the Gambia withdrew its membership from the Commonwealth, they are attributing the withdrawal of the Gambia to Dr. Tangara. That's stupidity. It's, stup it's stupidity, man. That's ignorance. Because Dr. Tangara serving in cabinet as a foreign minister can only advise cabinet. If cabinet takes a decision to withdraw from the commonwealth, it is the business of Dr. Kan Tangara as the foreign minister to ensure that that happens because that is a state position. That is a government position. It is a cabinet position. It is not Dr. Tangara's position. What business, what, dis, what advantage would it have for Dr. Tangara to withdraw Gambia from the Commonwealth? What does it serve, Dr. Tangara? Some, sometimes we don't even understand what we say. If you're blaming Dr. Tangara for or attributing the withdrawal of the Gambia from the Commonwealth to Dr. Tangara, why will you not attribute every single amendment that took place in, 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 James, in James' regime by National Assembly individuals who are your mothers and fathers, your sisters and brothers. The people that amended the laws that changed the 1997 Constitution are your brothers and sisters, your mothers and fathers that sat at the National Assembly and amended those laws that are still in existence today in the 1997 Constitution. Why are you not calling them evil and calling them bad? The drafters of those laws that are in the 1997 constitution that you call Jame laws are still walking in the streets of Gambia, are still holding up as if they're the most righteous people that ever walked the face of the earth. Who amended those laws? Was it Jame that amended them at the state house? No, it was amended in our hallowed chambers of the National Assembly by Gambians who are now going against the candidacy of Dr. Tanga. What does that make us as a people? Who amended those laws? Who were the people that were effecting arrest? Was it not the Gambia police force? Was it not the army? Are these not institutions that are there? Have you called for the disbandment of the Gambia police force? Have you called for a disbandment of the Gambia national army? Because that is not how government works. It's devoid of logic. It's devoid of logic. Devoid of logic. No, Pamodo, I'm not part of his campaign team. If you, if you listen to my message at the start, you would know that I am not part of his campaign team. But Pamodo Bojang, I have seen, and I've always said this, regardless of what you can say about Pamodo Bojang, he doesn't pick and choose. At least maybe sometimes I don't understand what you say in Maninka, but what I see, what I read, and I, he doesn't pick and choose who to support, to support this person today, support that other person today. I am now posing a question to you, Pamodu. Can you tell me who amended those laws in the 1997 constitution? Who did? 
Was it Jaya Jame that went and sat at the National Assembly and passed those laws into existence? No. It was our brothers and sisters, our relatives, our friends, people we, we hold in the highest of esteem. Where these people, in fact, I dare say, people that amended laws, people that effected arrest for Jame, people that prosecuted for Jame, people that aided and abetted Jame, have the greater responsibility than Dr. Mamadou Tangara. I swear they do. And where you would have to weigh in and look, about, look at the people that have the greatest of responsibility, I can assure you it is not Dr. Tangara. It is not Dr. Tangara. Did those individuals, Amadu, not have personal values as well when they passed and amended those laws? When the police in Gambia were effecting arrests, did they not have values? Was it Yaya Jame that arrested the entire UDP executive? Was it not Gambians? Was it not police officers that took instructions? Did they not have a moral conscience? Did they not have a heart when they were arresting people who could be their fathers and mothers and sending them on trucks and sending them to the NIA? Were these not Gambians? Were these not people civil servants? Were they not civil servants? Did they not have a conscience? Did they not have the ability to resign? Who was beating protesters? Who opened fire against the, 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 the students at, 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 at the um, whatever protest that happened in Gambia? Was it Yaya Jame that came and opened a, a user gun? Was it not Gambians who are today doing their things and going again uh, and whatever they're doing? Who were the people that were lying and giving information to Jame? Who were the people that were reporting people where to a point during Jame's regime you were scared to even hire a maid that you don't know? You're scared to talk in a taxi driver. Were they not Gambians? Were they not people of conscience? As Gambians, we absolutely need to rediscover our values. We need to rediscover ourselves for who we are. Yes, it's easy to point fingers at certain individuals. It's easy. But we as a Gambian, we ref as, as, a Gam as, a, as a set of Gambian people, we refuse to take responsibility. We refuse to take responsibility. The average Gambian is capable of being the worst form of human being that ever exists. But we don't take responsibility of that. How did Jame manage for 22 years to have a tentacle in every aspect and spare of Gambia? It is because Gambians are the people that were reporting each other. It was Gambians who were snitching on each other. It was Gambians who were lying against each other. But accountability is not wrong, but account accountability cannot be selective. Accountability must be holistic. Accountability must, must have its tentacles in every spare, in every aspect, in every institution, in every fabric of our society. That is what is accountability. An accountability procedure cannot be selective. It should be no respecter of person. It should be blind. It is not Tangara alone that should bear the greatest responsibility. You cannot celebrate. I have seen people that are signing the petition against um, um, Dr. Tangara celebrating the, 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 the launching of a commission on access to information and bill that is headed by Nene McDolgay, who served on the Jami. If you think Nene McDowell serving on the jam, serving as foreign minister, has the character, has the personality, has the, has the wherewithal to be the chairperson of the Access to Information Commission, why the hell would you think Dr. Tangara cannot serve as, 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 as Secretary General of the Commonwealth? That is not accountability. That is selective accountability. That is hatredness. That's vindictiveness. You cannot celebrate one individual where all of them have a simple common denominator and that is they served on the jam. The fact is Dr. Tangara is more than qualified to be Secretary General of the Commonwealth. That is the fact. That is the fact. There is no Gambian and I see no one, including those that are, that, are, that are spearheading the petition, that are more qualified than Dr. Tangara. They are not more qualified than Dr. Tangara. Why are they not? The fact is, as Gambians, we are selective on who we support. We are selective on what to give a blind eye to. And we are selective of who to condemn.
wickedness, vindictiveness, evil is what we propagate most. But some of us are the most wicked. We are the most dark. We, we are dark. We are deep. We are evil. What we do behind closed doors is worse than what Dr. Tangara may ever contemplate in his mind. May ever contemplate his mind. Some of us don't even have blood in our veins. Our blood is dark, it's evil, it's wicked. And a Gambian is very capable. Very capable. I thank you guys for watching. That's all I've got to say. And I stand and I support the candidacy of Dr. Tangara. And from today till that point in time, I will absolutely support his candidacy. And I will implore anybody that has a conscience, that has the ability to reason well, and know that Dr. Tangara is not the only person that had served on the Jami. Your relatives who are in the Gambia police force served on the Jami. They took instruction from Jami. They arrested people from Jami. I'm, I'm under instruction from Jami. But these are people that we see as our brothers and sisters. We still celebrate them. We still celebrate them. We don't believe they have done anything. We just believe they were serving. But you cannot pick and choose what to condemn, what to believe, and what not to believe. The fact is, the Gambia, we ourselves, are the greatest of dictators. The dictator, like I always say, is us. Is us. Because some of us, if we had the ability, or we had the power that Jame had, we would have done the worst of things. Some of us are so evil. Some of us are so vindictive. Some of us are so wicked. We are so callous that I'm telling you, if we had the opportunity that President Barrow has, if we have the opportunity that Yaya Jame has, we would have been the lowest and worst form of human beings to ever exist. The fact is we have not yet had that opportunity. We have not yet had that voice. We have not yet had the ability to do the things that Jame did. I thank you guys for joining me, and I wish you all the best. And again, I will say, Dr. Tangara must be supported as a Gambian, a qualified Gambian, as a person of experience, as a person who has done everything to ensure that the Gambia we have today, the dispensation that we are having today and enjoying, was as a result of his singular and individual effort to ensure the matter of Gambia was tabled before the United Nations to give us the support that we so need to ensure that Yaya Jame would go to Equatorial Guinea in peace and President Adam Barrow would be sworn in as President of the Gambia. I thank you for joining and I wish you all a pleasant night.